verse 3. I read, I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. This morning, we want to call upon the Lord, and we shall be saved. We want to give a clap offering unto the Lord for opening another door of opportunity for us. Just welcome the presence of the Lord. Just welcome the presence of the Lord. The bigger your club, the bigger your blessing will be this morning. In the name of Jesus. We want to pray and thank God for always being there wherever we call on him. And for his protection, his provision, and strength for our life this morning. Just lift up your hand towards heaven and thank him. Thank him for giving you another opportunity to come before his presence. We want to pray and thank God for always being there whenever we call on him. And for his protection, his provision, and strength in our life in the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hand towards heaven. Begin to thank God for this opportunity. Begin to thank God because when you call him, he will hear and he will answer you. This morning, your prayer will be answered. This morning, when you call upon him, he will answer you in the name of Jesus. We welcome your presence, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity, O oh God. Whenever we call on you, you will hear, O oh God, because you are worthy to be praised, O oh God, because you saved us from our enemies, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for the strength that you've given unto us in the name of Jesus. We welcome your presence. Just thank God. Welcome his presence. Welcome him. Welcome him. Welcome him. His presence is here in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your word declares, it's not he that will it, nor he that run it, but you show a mercy. We thank you for showing us mercy this morning. We have breath in our nostrils. We are alive. It is by your grace. It is by your grace, oh God. It is by your grace. In the name of Jesus. We are grateful unto you, Lord. We are grateful unto you, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity in your presence, oh God. We will not live here the same, oh God. Let your presence fill this place. Let your presence fill this place. We thank you for protection. We thank you for provision. We thank you for the strength, oh God, that we have this morning. In the name of Jesus, give a clap offering unto the Lord. Genesis 32, 26 to 28, I read. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Hallelujah. For you have struggled with God and with men and you have prevailed. Hallelujah. This morning you have struggled with God and with man and you have prevailed. Hallelujah. Give a clap of hand unto the Lord. You have prevailed. You are alive this morning. You are alive this morning. We want to pray that we'll have an encounter with the presence of the Lord in this morning service. Just as Jacob had an encounter with the Lord, you also have an encounter with the Lord. Just lift up your hand towards heaven. You have an encounter. You have an encounter. You have an encounter with God this morning. You have an encounter with God this morning. And he will bless you because if he doesn't bless you, you will not let him go. You have an encounter with God this morning. This morning his presence is here. You have an encounter with him. You have an encounter with him. Your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. You want to declare that your life will never be the same because of the encounter that you have with him this morning in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we welcome you oh god you will bless us you will bless us and we will not live here the same we will live here change our prayers will be answered oh god we depend on you oh god let us feel your presence oh god hear us hear us when we call on you oh god we need answers to our prayers oh god we will not live here the same we want to prevail we want to prevail over the 
circumstances, oh God, over the challenges, oh God, over the difficulties, oh God, stretch forth your hands, stretch forth your hands towards us and bless us, oh God, bless us, oh God, bless us, oh God, bless us, oh God, help us to overcome the challenges, oh God, help us to overcome the difficulties, oh God, hear us, hear us, draw nigh to us, oh God, open up your spirit, oh God, and pour down a blessing unto us, oh God, we want to receive from you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Libada, La Branda la Sotayabe, La Bada la Sotayabe, La Branda la Sotayabe, Li Pata la Sotayabe, La Branda la Sotayabe, Li Bada la Sotayabe, La Branda la Sotayabe, La Branda la Sotayabe, Li Bata la Sotayabe, La Bada, La Branda la Sotayabe, Li Bata la Sotayabe. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. This month is the month of reach, hallelujah. In ICGC this month, we are supposed to go out and reach out, hallelujah. So Bible says in Matthew 9.38, Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his field, hallelujah. Into the harvest field, hallelujah. We want to pray that in this period of reach, God will send us with his word and the demonstration of his power to witness to the unsaved and the backslidden. Others witness unto us. That is why we are here this morning. This morning, want to stretch forth your hand towards heaven and ask God that he will endure it with power so that you can also go out and reach out to others. Let's pray. Let's pray that God will send us with his word so that we'll go out and reach out to others in the name of Jesus. Send us forth, O God. The harvest is ready. We are ready, O God. Send us, put a word in our mouth, O God, so that we'll be witnesses for you in the name of Jesus, so that we'll go out, O God, and win souls to you. We will speak your word, and others will come to you, O God, in the name of Jesus. You have the power to transform, O God, equip us so God, equip us so God, so that we will go forth, O oh God, with a demonstration of your power to witness to the unsaved, O oh God, and the backsliding in the name of Jesus. We want to gather all, O oh God. We want to send forth your word, O oh God, to them, O oh God, that they may be saved. They may be saved, O oh God. We want to reach out, O oh God. We want to reach out, O oh God. Encourage us, equip us, O oh God, with whatever it takes, O oh God, to go forth in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Leave that we will be witnesses of you, O oh God. We will not sit down and lay back, O oh God, but we will go forth because the harvest is ready, O oh God. The harvest is ready, O oh God. Give unto us, give unto us whatever it takes, O oh God. The boldness, the confidence, O oh God, to go out and speak your word, to go out and speak your word in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, endure us with power and Encourage us, O oh God, whatever we lack, O oh God, fill us, fill us, O oh God, that we'll be bold to go and speak out your word in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We have received grace for grace from you, O oh God. We will go forth, we will go forth, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. John 1 16, it says, and of his fullness, we have all received and grace for grace. Hallelujah. And of his fullness, we have all received and grace for grace. This morning, lift up your hand towards heaven for the grace that is available unto you. It is by grace that you have been saved. Thank God for the grace. Thank God for abundant grace. Thank God for abundant grace. Abundant grace. His grace is abounding. He has forgiven you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for abundant grace. We thank you for abundant grace. We thank you for abundant grace. We bless your name, O oh God. We welcome your presence, Holy Spirit, O oh God. We have received grace for grace. In your fullness, we have received grace for grace. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name in the name of Jesus. Liba dala was Santayaba, La Brandala was Sotayaba, La Brandala was Sotakatayaba, Liba dala was Santayaba. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, your loving kindness towards us. We welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. Begin to thank God for answer prayer. Begin to thank God for answer prayer. Begin to thank God for answer prayer in the name of Jesus.
Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. In the name of Jesus, just give a clap offering unto the Lord. A bigger clap offering unto the Lord. You must give God a better clap offering. Clap your hands, oh ye people. I said, clap your hands, oh ye people. Clap your hands, oh ye people. Somebody clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. He gives us beautiful ashes. Oil of joy for morning. Garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That will become the planting of the Lord. Hallelujah. Respectfully lift up your hands to the Lord right now and release a sound from your mouth. A sound, a sound of appreciation, a sound of thanksgiving, a sound of honor, and a sound of worship. Yeah. Bless him, bless him, bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We bless your name. Even as we worship you, may you be filled with the knowledge of his will in this place. Osa in Christo Momani Dinso Oyohe you can lift your voice and tell him now. Oh, Sahi, Christo, Momadi, Tinso.
is Lord your name It's exalted in the heavens Exalted in the earth I want you to lift up your hands and sing hallelujah Hallelujah. With your hands lifted up, you say your name, your name, your name, your name, your name, say your name. It's exalted. Enter into deeper worship.
Some very man, only me and me and All the party and I'm a better boy Who tell you that, I'm power you that They won't hope I'm bad up So you're so afraid of it You know that shout
Hallelujah. You want to put your hands together for the Lord one more time. The Lord is good. You want to give the Lord a shout offering this morning. Thank you, Lord. And please take your seat in God's house. The Lord is good. And all the time. He liberates us to serve him. He liberates us to worship him. He liberates us that we can stand before him in praise and worship and honor him for who he is and what he does for us. But then when Paul was responding to some matters that had come to his attention regarding what people ate and drank, he did make a statement that should draw attention to the very important things for us as Christians. In the chapter 14 verse 17 and verse 18 of Romans this is what Paul said for the kingdom of God is not in a matter of eating and drinking but of righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. So we can celebrate God, we can enjoy being Christians, we can dress up, come to church, lift our hands and dance and do all the nice things. They are very good. However, I want to draw your attention to some other things that are key. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. For if you want to receive the approval of God, if we want to be pleasing to God, then we ought to serve God in this way. Amen. <laughs> On behalf of the senior pastor, prophet, our knowing his wife, Reverend Felicia, I know it is a great joy to welcome you all to today's morning service. Usually when we meet like this, some people join us for the first time. And to those of you, a big welcome to you. But having come here today, we want to see you and we want to take notice of your presence. So please, if today is your first time here, I want to ask you to please stand on your feet as the rest of us. We put our hands together for them and welcome them to God's house. Oh, please, show them some love. Show them some love. It is a great joy to have you worshiping with us today. The ushers are coming around with welcome forms. Please wait till they get to you and hand you one. If you receive one of the forms, you may please resume your seat. Kindly complete the form that you have been given. Provide us with your names and your contact details. And during the time of offering, please place the completed form in the offering basket. After service, we also want you to meet with our hosts and hostesses for a short time before you go home. They will be waiting for you at our guest lunch. And you can access the guest lunch using the middle exit to my right, straight ahead of you. Uh, there is an office there that they will be there waiting for you. So please make your way there and speak to them before you go home today. We also want to acknowledge those of you who have joined our service using the internet. A big welcome to you. We believe that you will also be blessed as the service goes on. Please, 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 anytime you happen to be in this area, may I ask that you join us in person. Let's worship God together in this place because... As I do say, the atmosphere here is different. Just to remind you that you are the Holy Ghost Temple of the International Central Gospel Church. This is a Bible-believing, charismatic church with a commitment to bring in leadership and vision to our generation and also influence our society through the principles of Christ. We believe that the services that we have have been designed to help you grow 
become like Christ. So please make yourself available, participate in our services, and enjoy what God is doing with us in this place. Amen. Please take note of the following announcements. Life Walk 2023. We will take a short video and I come back. Lace up and gear up for Life Walk 2023. ICGC's annual health and fitness walk is here again. Join Pastor Mensa Otabil and the ICGC family on a 12 kilometer walk. Come, let's take 14,500 steps, burn 1,000 calories, and raise funds for mental health in Ghana. Life Walk 2023 comes off on Saturday, 25th March. Arrival time 5 a.m. Walk starting time. 5.30 a.m. prompt. Walking route from Christ Temple East at Teshi. Turn left to Chado Roundabout. Military Cemetery. Turn at Lister Hospital through the Military Cemetery, Chado Roundabout, and back to Christ Temple East, Teshi. Recovery buses would also ply routes to pick up anybody who's unable to continue from the kilometric point to the finishing grounds at Teshi. Come with your entire family as we walk to stay fit, strengthening the ICGC community. Meet new people, network, and support mental health in Ghana. Similar walks are being held in various ICGC regions. Find out about your region's Life Walk route and other details from your local assembly. Grab a Life Walk 2023 walking tag for 10 Ghana cities and get as many as you can for your family and friends as your contribution to mental health care in Ghana. Buses will be available at vantage points across the city to convey you to Christ Temple East for life walk and take you back after the walk. Let's walk in our numbers. Check out the My ICGC app and our social media pages for further details or your local assembly for more. It's going to be fun and exciting and you certainly can't miss Life Walk 2023. So please take note, it's on Saturday, the 25th of March, 2023, 5 a.m., Christ Temple East. Buses will be made available departing from the Holy Ghost Temple compound at 4.30 a.m., and the routes will be through Adenta Barrier, Race Junction, Zongo Junction, Atomic Junction, Oponglo, Legon, to then Christ Temple East. After the walk, the buses will come by the same route, and the final stop will be here on the Holy Ghost Temple compound. Please be reminded that as part of the preparatory works ahead of the life walk, coming Saturday, 6 a.m., we will do some exercise walking to the Abri Mountains and back. So please do take note. 21 days of reach. Again, we'll take a short video, and I will come back. someone about the love of Christ? Have you won a soul today? Tell your family, friends, colleagues, and workmates what Christ has done for you whenever you get the opportunity, either in person or on social media. Invite them to church and let's share fellowship together in Christ. God bless you as you reach out with the gospel. Reach, winning souls for Christ. So continue to talk to people about Christ and bring them to church. Amen. ABC graduation. As it has been previously announced, members of the church who went through the ABC program uh, via the online module should please get themselves ready for a graduation session. Kindly go to the information desk and uh, complete the formalities for the graduation. Funeral reminders. Please take note that the funeral of the late Mr. James Odotoy Sowa will take place on Saturday, 18th of March at 9 a.m. here at the Holy Ghost Temple. The funeral service of the late Mr. Albert Ni Akwe Alote will also take place on Saturday, the 18th of March, 2023, 9 a.m. at the Simpe Number 1 School Park at Mamprobi. Also, the funeral of the late Madame Victoria Douglas will take place on Friday, the 24th of March, 2023, at 8 a.m. here at the Holy Ghost Temple. So please do take note. 
And then we have the funeral of the late Madame Vaida Laura Akua Karia Siedimante. The funeral service will take place on Saturday, 25th of March, 2023, at 9 a.m. here at the Holy Ghost Temple. So please do take note. Wedding announcements. There will be the wedding of Ni Koi Addison and Ya Koiwa Kakari. The ceremony will take place on Saturday, the 25th of March, 2023, at the Presbyterian Church of Ghana Faith Congregation at Medina, time 10 a.m. This morning, Ni Addison and Ya Kakari are the ladies' church for introduction. Ni is a member of this church. He is a finance and admin officer at Azuma Resources Limited. Ya Kakari is a member of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Faith Con Congregation, Medina. And she is a pharmacist working with the Volta River Authority. People of God, if there be any reason why these persons should not be lawfully joined together in holy matrimony, then let the senior pastor and the leadership of the church know. If not, when it does happen, kindly hold your peace. We also have the wedding that will be between Benjamin Kojo Gezi and Angela Apemada Kwashi. The ceremony will take place on Saturday, the 1st of April, 2023, here at the Holy Ghost Temple at 12 noon. May I ask Benjamin and Angela to stand up for introduction to the church. Benjamin is a member of the Bethel Methodist Church Tema Community 11 with their Youth Fellowship. He is a quantity surveyor at Bentry Company Limited. Angela is a member of this church with the data management team. She is a financial risk consultant at KPMG. People of God, if there be any reason why Benjamin and Angela should not be lawfully joined together in holy matrimony, then let the senior pastor and the leadership of the church know. If not, when it does happen, kindly Hold your peace. Thank you very much. You may take your seat. It's time for us to bring our offering to God today. And I believe you came to church prepared to give God an offering. He does many things for us. We cannot pay him for what he does for us. But at least we can show our appreciation by offering something to him, acknowledging his rulership of our lives and his hand that helps us. This morning, as we present our offering, we will receive music ministration from the choral team. Please put your hands together for them.
Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the choral team and put our hands together for the band that supported them. Thank you very much. The one who is able to keep us safe and faultless, presenting us unto him to his glory. He's got a message for you and I today. Please help me welcome the servant of God, Prophet Christopher Yawano, bringing us God's word. Gracious Father, it's you we've come to. It's you we run for safety. It's you who keeps us. You kept us from last week, and we are here again. It's your grace. I pray, O oh God, that who you are the one who knows our heart, our intent, and Lord knows our need. Here is our worship. We bring what you gave to us throughout the week as an offering unto you. First, our life our heart, our bodies, then second, the substance you gave us. Let this be acceptable before you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good morning and praise the Lord. It's time to have an encounter with Christ Jesus. And life is full of encounters. You can either encounter the right person or the wrong person. But I pray that in our walk in life, we will always have an encounter with him who gave us life and who brought us to this world and who can do all things. I like a song. That we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Never settle for less. If you come in contact with Christ. Good. Help me. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we and we will never settle for we know we know there's more that's found in you we will never settle and we will never settle for we know we know there's more that's found in you say it's in you lord it's in you lord it's in you it's in you lord we It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, 
Anytime you come to church, never settle for less. That's enough for everyone to take home. This morning, you can tell the Father, the Creator, that don't let me go back empty in the name of Jesus. Let it be your prayer that you want an encounter that can change your name, that can bring mercy to you, and that can make you know him well. There have been many encounters in the Bible. One of them was an encounter with with Jacob. Jacob was a man who went through difficult times. An encounter with God guaranteed total transformation of life. For somebody to be transformed and to change it. In fact, real transformation comes when a man or a woman have an encounter with God. You cannot have an encounter with God and remain the same. We've been trying to change people. But a simple man loves to sin <laughs> until he comes face to face with the Savior. Jacob's story was a very sad story. A zealous man chose him from the womb but came out <laughs> which life wasn't straight. He has a zeal and he won't bless him. But by nature, the way he came, he wasn't the first. Sometimes it's not your doing. Your mother gave you not the first son, but the second son. He wished he was the firstborn so that he can get the firstborn blessings. But sometimes you didn't choose your position, but you can change your position. Yeah. He wasn't the first, but he decided to be first. An opportunity came, which is a brother who never valued the position he occupied and was ready to trade his life, his future for a morsel of food. It doesn't mean that he wasn't hungry. He was really hungry. And hunger can make us take decisions. Whenever you are in tight corner, if you don't take time, you take the wrong decision. Some of us take decisions, borrowed monies, with huge interest you know you can't pay, just because you are in a tight corner. You needed something to ease you. But where you put yourself is rather from frying pan to fire. (laughs) 
Imagine you owe somebody and he comes and wants his money and some, you know, debt collectors, some of them, they are very, you have to be, you don't have to be like me. You have to have a, know how to harass more than a demon. <laughs> After harassing you, harassing you, sometimes as if your spirit is gone. You haven't owed before. Whatever you can do to pay that person to have your freedom, you want to do it. So you go to people, you go, you want money just to ease yourself for the moment. And somebody says, okay, I'll give it to you 100% by next month if you can double it. And because you want to have freedom now, you are ready to accept that offer so that that person will stop worrying you. Forgetting that a month time is going to double. I hope you're getting me. So we put ourselves in a place because of difficulties and putting yourself, you worsen the case. His brother was hungry. He could have taken two hours to cook. And the hunger that didn't kill you for six hours wouldn't kill you for the next one hour or two. Self-control by the appetite. So, I would say that when you are in a tight corner, then enter into agreement with anybody. I don't want to go for a loan for this church. When the debtors are on me, I will make a wrong decision. I would like to plan that if I want to take a loan to do something, I will sit down and plan, I want to do this. So I want to take a loan. This is how much interest I think I can pay, and that within this time, I would have finished paying it. I don't allow situation to detect to me. If you do that, you will go down. Some of you are there. Somebody brings you a car. Oh, just get a car and pay it for five months. You are not working. <laughs> How are you going to get that money to pay that car just because you want to sit in a car and come to church? So that people will say, you too. Yeah. We don't live life to please anyone. It is not, I don't like, don't worry. I don't like anytime people tell me, oh, Pastor, you are very handsome today because of your dress. Is it the dress that is handsome? <laughs> or it is me? In other words, they are praising the dress and not me. <laughs> so I will not put my hope and my belief that I am handsome because of my dress. I should be handsome because I am handsome. Yes. You are beautiful not because of the dress. If you are beautiful, you are beautiful. If you are not, <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> so have confidence in yourself. 
there's nothing nobody can change about me. But my dress, you can change it. Your confidence should not be in your car, in your house, in whatever you have. All that we have one day, we will leave them. We struggle and work and run day and night seeking for temporary things. You are quiet. That's not a good message. When a man comes in contact or encountered with Christ, everything changes. The way he sees things changes. This Jacob I was talking about took a blessing. But with the blessing there was a knife. His brother was looking for him to kill him. So he has to go to exile and wouldn't stay, couldn't stay with the family. What kind of blessing is that? You have the blessing and you can't stay with your family. You have to be like a figurative running around. How? Is that a blessing? Until he came in contact at a point, he was facing what he was running away from. Whatever you try to run away from, you will face this one day. And the brother was coming with an army. Coming to meet his brother with a battalion. It wasn't when you are going to meet your brother, you don't need a troop to follow you. So he heard that his brother was coming with armed people. And he knows that this brother has been forgiven. He knows that his life was in danger. So he tried to use the same brain that he used in taking the blessing from his brother. This one to save himself. So you know, he had children before women. You know that? You don't know. So he put the slave or the, how do I call them? The concubine children first. I put the wife he didn't choose, which they gave to him. And they you know they are saying they will, they will put it on your neck. You could you can remove it. So he put that one, the children, second. Then he put the one he lost, <laughs> that it was his own choice. Last. That even there's going to be death. The concubine and the children should go first. <laughs> Followed by the one that was entrusted and put on him. Then maybe by the time they finish them, God might have had mercy to deliver them. <laughs> the one he likes. Then he himself lasts. Instead of the man to go first, he was 
last, he want to save his life and the rest. That is the human mind. But when he was last, he didn't stay there alone. Someone appeared to him. He had an encounter. He had an encounter. And that encounter changed. Turned his death sentence into friendship sentence. The brother that was ready with anger to come and destroy him after he had an encounter with Jesus. The brother himself ran. Even the gift he wanted to give the brother, he said, I'm not going to take it. The brother became friend to him. If your ways are pleased with the Lord, even your enemies become friends. So it changed his own name. His name was changed in actually from where? From Jacob to Israel. Jacob the crook to Israel the nation. If we read through the scriptures, there are many that had encounter with him. The blind, the sick, the lame, even Peter, while he was struggling, he was just there and somebody came. He didn't know the person. And he said, push your boat. Give me your boat to preach in that boat. If you're talking to a fisherman, pray to God that you don't put anger in his heart. He said, push. People were present. He said, give me your boat to preach in that boat. So they push the boat. And he stood in the boat and did what? He preached. Did he preach? He preached and he was looking at him. What was going to happen? Oh my God. Luke 5 11. I think I will. Building my so let's read a little why the burden. Let book read up. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of what? Gennesaret. And saw what? Two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. If you're in Accra, you stayed in Jamestown before, you understand. When I came to Accra, the first place I stayed was Jamestown. So you go to the beach and you see them uh, mending their and removing their nets. And Kwaku, Sechi, Winniba, he knows wind debate, simple. <laughs> then he got. No, no, verse one. Let me. I haven't finished that one. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone f from them and were washing their lake, their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. Whose boat is that? And asked him, 
To do what? To push out what? A little from the land. And he sat and taught the multitude from the boat. Now he borrowed Peter's boat. Imagine I ask you, bring your bench so that I can sit inside and preach the Bible, the, the word. The boat was the container, was his office, was his office complex. Say, give me your office complex to preach the gospel. Peter obeyed and gave it to him. He would have been angry. I know if Peter had caught fish, he would have gone home. But there wasn't plenty of fish. He has. He was struggling. There was nothing happening. And somebody coming to tell you, in this one, you are frustrated. You went to do business. You didn't get anything. You went for an application. And everything is not working for you. Then somebody comes, hey, give me your car. The little petrol in it. He said, take me to Oibi to go and preach. The word. Look at the pastor's face. If it's from my village, who born you by mistake? <laughs> but he gave him the boat first. He didn't know who that person was, what that person can do, but he offered it to him. And Jesus sat in it and preached. Let me finish. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, after he finished preaching, he finished and we closed the service. He then said to Peter, Simon, launch out into where? The deep. And let down your what? Your net for a catch. He told him what he's going to do. That look, go in the deep, launch out the net. There's a catch there and catch them. If I were Peter, I would ask him, are you a preacher man or you're a fisherman? <laughs> Say, oh, Bible, no, be preacher. Preach your Bible. You don't come to a specialized place. You even don't know how fish behave in the sea. I have more experience than you when it comes to fishing. But he obeyed. Did he obey? Oh, let's see whether he obeyed. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, the normal complaint of human beings. Master, boss, we have toiled all night, if you didn't know, and we caught nothing. If you don't know, it is night that we go for fishing. It is not daytime. If you don't catch it by night, by day, what else can you catch? <laughs> we have toiled. Most of us have toiled all night. But he didn't first say, Peter, go and fish first. He said, give me your boat. You need to surrender something to Jesus before he can use what you surrender to you to help you. It might not make sense now as you surrender your life, as you give whatever you have to Jesus. But later on, he, didn't even, he wasn't even thinking of fish. The man asked him, and that day, his good came. You know, sometimes, O Papa Neba, Uti Me Papa. Sometimes you feel like doing what? And whoever comes on your way, you, but there are some days too. Yeah, but that day, that thing came. So he gave it to Jesus. 
After he finished, he said, launch out it. He gave a command. Peter, launch out it. And Peter said, we have toiled all night. Most of us have been toiling. Toiling means working very hard and having nothing. God did not create us to toil. He created us to work. There's a difference between working and toiling. Working is to work and you get the result that is desired. Toiling is working very hard and getting nothing. So you can toil by reading all the subjects that you've been taught. When you fail, you've toiled. When you pass, you worked hard. <laughs> Good. So he said, throw in with toil. All of us have been toiling, including pastors. Huh. They call it Ajumehunu. You work and work and work and work expecting to have a result and the result is negative. We've toiled all night as an individual, as a group. We've done our best but something, nothing has happened. And we didn't, you just this morning, just said, go and throw in. Okay. Let's look at what. So he told him the, the situation before going. We have toiled all night and caught what? Nothing. Nevertheless, sometimes there must be nevertheless. It doesn't matter how long you have suffered. When Jesus asks you, you might have done it before, but do it. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down what? The net. Probably what Jesus was teaching them, Peter was also listening, isn't it? Because Jesus taught and preached from the, uh, from the boat. And it was Peter's boat. So Peter could have been one of the congregation that he preached to. Then he might have created faith in him. So when Jesus asked him, faith has already been created. And he said, if it is for ordinary fishing, I wouldn't have done it. But because you have said it, I am going to do it. So he went in and, uh, and when they had done this, they caught what? A great number of what? Fish. And their net was what? Breaking. They couldn't contain what they caught. The same sea, the same boat, the same net, the same Peter, but different results of Jesus. The encounter with Jesus will always change the result. Amen. I hope you're getting me. Yes. Well, so, it was so much that they have to form partnership. It was a sole proprietor. But the business had grown so large that it was bigger than one man to manage. So he has to bring others. If it's you, you will say, hey, I will sink with this. Uh, uh, I will sink with the fish for another person to come and join. Because when I was pushing the boat, uh, were they there to come and share? The prophet with me. Selfishness. 
he moved out of himself and said, and Call the others who have also suffered and haven't been able. And that is why after receiving Christ, you also have to go and invite people. So, he entered into partnership. He called his partners. He called that, come and join us. Something great is happening. Good news has happened. We've toiled all now. We never received anything. But I've had an encounter with a certain man. And the results have become different. So come. So he signaled them to the partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled what? Both the boats so that they began to sink. I don't know what kind of net that can catch fishes that will fill two boats. It only takes an encounter with Christ that your one net can fill all the boats. There were empty net and it was filling until both got filled. Then the fish stopped. Their profit was so much that they didn't know what to do with their profit. Somebody thinking, my like, e prophet, if it happens to me. So <laughs> let, 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 let's see. When Simon saw it, he fell down at, the, at Jesus. At what? Jesus' knees. Jesus knees. Saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. You cannot have an encounter with Jesus and still be proud. Anytime you enter, have an encounter, you see yourself as a sinner that needs a savior. He said, Get away from me. Like most of us we do when we sin. You want to run away from church. Don't run away from church. In fact, church is good for sinners. Hey, Proposition. Church is good for sinners. Just saying that hospital is good for the sick people. This is where sin. Medicine is. <laughs> so when something happens, don't run away. Come to the house of God. Amen. It doesn't matter whichever condition in which you are in. You may be the worst sinner. Christ came to die for sinners. For he and all who were with him were what? Astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Fishermen, being surprised, astonished. It is me who is not a fisherman from that bush place. I should be astonished because they have seen fish. Then they were astonished. And look at what happened. And so were James and John. So we now found the partners. And sons, the sons of what? Zebedee. Who were partners with what? Simon. They. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. From now on, it's not only fish that you will catch. You will catch men. Wherever your money is hiding in any man's account, you will catch him. <laughs> Whatever breakthrough that is with you, that is hiding with somebody, 
He can be in Greenland. God has a way <laughs> of bringing him. You will catch men. So when they had brought their boat to the land, they what? They forsook what? All and followed him. What the lesson from it is that what we are looking for, what we are toiling for, what we are struggling for is nothing. They got it. They caught the fish. But when they came and when they had an encounter with Christ, they saw that the fish is nothing. What you are hanging on to, what you feel is the one that is holding your life, when you come in and encounter with Christ, it will be nothing. They forsook all that they toil all night looking for. When it came, they forsook it. So the things we are toiling for, they are nothing. Once you see and you come in contact with the reality, you'll find out that why will you kill your brother for money? Sometimes you are possessed with something so much that you, you don't care what you do to the other person. Sometimes you dis, we destroy our own friends so that we can take their position. After getting it, you'll find out that, you know, your economic book says, man have what desire. Good. You have, you have mentioned it. <laughs> yes. What? The desire of men keep on. It doesn't end. Look, you want this, you get it. When I get this, I'm finished. You'll get it. After a few times, you use it for a small day. The day you bought your first car, you didn't want to leave. You want to sleep inside the car. <laughs> that night, you come out small and sit inside. Then you try it. You, you, and, and you are so just say, this has arrived. Meanwhile, <laughs> you can't be You are very happy. You are, you, you, are, you, you are just excited that you own a car in that community. So you want everyone to know that you have a car. When you're driving, you roll it so that people will see you, that you're the one driving. You hit pop, 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 and everybody, hey, the, for a month, two months, three months, six months, it becomes ordinary. Everyone knows you have the car. You know you have it. Now, you are thinking about petrol. Husband. Oh Jesus, that day I'm gone. All my need was her. Someone said, The day I get a husband, I'll be free. My parents are always controlling me. I want to marry and be free from this control. Hey! You don't know.
Sarah, do 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 Being a girlfriend and a boyfriend, they're different be to be, they're different being a husband and a wife. If you are a girlfriend and a boyfriend, the day I don't have money, I will avoid you. <laughs> but if you are married, <laughs> money or no money, you will come home. <laughs> so you bring out your best to show forth your girlfriend and your boyfriend, but you can't hide your worst from your wife. So you're happy you marry. You think you've got everything. Honeymoon. <laughs> you start the fight there. Then later you said, ah, this marriage is boring. <laughs> ha! It's not boring, that's part of it. <laughs> Says that prisoner, you have to come, especially when you are, you are, you are. You're a Ghanaian. Come from work. Come and cook. Whether you want to eat or you don't want to eat, you will cook. And you say, why did I enter into this marriage? You wish you are free like your other friends. Your friend says, oh, we are going here. You tell your husband, we are going to say, look, Stay here. <laughs> Your freedom is curtailed. But the Bible says that you no longer belong to your body. Your body no longer belongs to you. It belongs to your husband. The same way the man, it belongs to your wife. So you enter into it and say, my body, I give to you. So if you want to carry the body, you need permission. So nothing, everything that happens, we get used to it. So the things we are chasing, the things we are killing, the things we are fighting to make, to get all of them after getting it is nothing. The only thing that is permanent is Christ. They forsook all. You cannot see Christ being revealed to you for you to hold on to anything. They forsook all and followed him. My last story, that was a great encounter, isn't it? If you have an encounter, you don't hold on. When I see people who say, we know, I know Jesus, I look at some, some things you hold on to. If you hold on to some things, you know him, but no deep. No, they are level of knowing Jesus. You may know him at your a certain level here. Some they need, some they waste, but you must know him. If we really know him, Look, peace will run through our heart. This is Peter, their first encounter with Jesus. He offered his boat. He heard his word. 
he obeyed his word and forsook everything and followed him. Then in Luke chapter 8, people, Jesus preached and people followed him. And he said, I am going to the other side. I preached it last week. Did I? And I said, I will continue. And you didn't, remind, you didn't bring it to my memory. <laughs> I told you when I can tell you, you didn't tell me. So that's why I picked from this place. Where did I get to? So he asked them, let us go to the other side. And on their way, there was a storm. Look, the fact that Jesus, you have Jesus in your heart, doesn't mean you meet problems. In fact, your Jesus is the one who creates problems for you. The storm will come because of the Jesus you believe. Say, suffer, and they're magi. Jesus said, I am going to the other side. Let us go to the other side. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to where? The other side of the lake. And they launched out. I love this. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Sometime it looked like Jesus is asleep in our life. Have you ever wondered before, sometimes something is happening to you, you think Jesus should shake himself, and he's not shaking himself? Have you? There's a problem. You want Jesus to act. What that? <laughs> hey! Oh, So, he fell asleep. And the wind storm came down on the lake and they were filling with what? With water. And were in what? What is jeopardy? It's not a good thing. The situation was bad. Fishermen were afraid. Whenever you see the pilot and the, uh, this one shaking and they come to ask Pastor Pray in the air, no, that's a mercy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. He said, He that believeth in me shall never what? Perish. But he said, We are perishing. <laughs> then he arose and rebuked what? The wind and the raging of the water and the seas. And there was what? Look, no matter what storms that is happening in your life. Today, as you come to encounter with Christ, your sea will be calm. The storm will stop. Then, let's look at what, the reason why this thing happened. But he said to them, where is your faith? Ujidiwan. And they were afraid. Absence of faith bring terror and fear. And marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? Who can this be? They have walked with Jesus, but they've never encountered him in this area. Every day they say, oh, media, I'm an old Christian. I know him. No, 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 no. Every time Jesus revealed himself in a certain way, you must have an encounter in different areas of his, your life. See, they marvel. They walk with Jesus, but they never knew that he could talk to things for them to stop. Saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands what? Even what? The winds and what? And the water. He has power over the wind. He has power over the waters. 
No wonder he says, when you are in fire, I will be with you. When you are in the waters, I will be with you. Amen. But he is the master of the fire. He is the master of the wind. He is the master of the water. Amen. Finally, finally. And they were all afraid. Okay. They commanded the even, even the wind and the water, and they obey him. Do you obey him? Wind, water. If he says stop, they stop. You, if he tells you to stop, will you stop? <laughs> okay, okay, finally. Then they sailed the country of the Gadarene, which is opposite Galilee. They crossed to the other side. And when he stepped out of the land, they met him, a certain man from the city, who had demons. Who has what? Demons. demons. For a long time, this demon is not five days demon. They are custom. They know the area. They know the person. They know how to use him. They, the man had been with them for a very long time. The situation had been there. They tried to solve the problem. They couldn't solve it. For a very long time, isn't it? Or for a short time. And <laughs> he did what? And he wore no clothes. He doesn't like clothes. Nor did he live in a house. If you put it in a house, he doesn't want that place. But in where? In the tomb. Where dead people are buried. That is where that demon likes. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, thank God, and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment us. Don't take us to hell now, because our time has not yet come. Please, we beg you. So they are now negotiating. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For it had often seized him, and he, has, he was kept under what God, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. This is a man. It is not only Samson that could break chains. A demon possessed man. So spirits have the ability to break what men have done. Whether evil or good. So you can't put the man on the chain. If you put it, he will break it. And this is the kind of person and you will find out what was doing it. Look at what was doing. Jesus asked him, saying, what is your name? And he said, legion. What is a legion? Military people. It's an army. More than 2,000. Army. That's a legion. But I can say it by the what happened? Jesus asked him, saying, what is your name? And he said, legion, because many demons have entered him. One man is a military man. One man is an army. If one man demons can enter into one man to be able to become like one complete army, is it you when the Holy Spirit is in you that you cannot be more than that? No wonder the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than the legion that is in the demand. So man have the capacity of housing legions of spirits. One man no wonder the demons were using him. No wonder he was caught. 
the man have a bigger capacity. So the devil took advantage and caught him and failed him. And Jesus saw it. I believe that that's the reason why Jesus went there. He said, there is a man there. He's got the capacity that can do good work, great work. But the devil is putting him, he's kept him at the, at, at the cemetery. I want to go and release him. Let's go. And when they were going, then the devil said, hey, where are you people going? So they see. He tried to stop them. He tried to fail them. He tried to attack them. He tried to divert their course. The fact that you are following a vision or a dream which God has given to you doesn't mean that you will meet storms. The reason why you are meeting the storm is because there is something great that you are going to achieve. Amen. The storms, these storms were the one. And look at what, oh Jesus. And they begged him that he will not command them to go into the abyss. God, they didn't want to go there. Because even though that's their final, uh, their place. Now a herd of swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he will permit them to enter them. And he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine. And the head ran violently down the steep, placed into the lake, and drowned. Okay. In some other place, the other versions, the number of the swine were mentioned. Is it how many? Bible studies. Or well, 2,000. That's why I said the demons, if one demon is in one, went into one. Then this, you see the huge amount of demons one man can hold. What the spirit a man can have, a tree cannot have it like that. An animal cannot have it like that. So why would you fear a big tree with a calico around it? <laughs> okay, let me finish quickly. Quickly, I'll finish. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it to the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man for whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Wow. Clothed. The man was still clothed, but now clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Hey! The man! He has changed. In his right mind, well dressed, suit like Christopher Yohannes one. <laughs> then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demon departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Instead of believing, they were afraid. And look at what happened after the affair. They also, they who had seen it, told them by what means he who had been demon possessed was healed. So they saw what happened. They were there. Then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the gathering asked him to do what? To depart from them. Say, hey, man, 
Firako. We don't want you on our land. So the ashes depart from them, for they were seized with great fear, and they got into what? The boat and what? So what did Jesus go to do? Why did he go there? Because of one man. He went to that place. Let us go to the other side. He saw the man. He went there. This man has capacity. You, you have great capacity. And look at the capacity that the man has. You see what he had. Let's look at it before I, I just read. Now the man who had demons had departed, uh, that had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, because he said, look, your capacity is not just to only hold my Bible and follow me. You have more. You can do better. It's not everybody that should be called as a pastor. Some have some capacity that they will have to work so that the church can move on. What they can do, Peter can do. What they can do, Prophet Anno can do. So he said, no, you don't have to follow me. What is in you? You are great. So you go. Straight, be an evangelist. Return to your own house. Return where? Say return to your own house. Look at somebody, tell the person in the face that return to your own house. When you get free, the first place you have to go is your home. Where to preach the gospel is your own house. Go, let me see, let's see the next. Oh. Return to your own what? Is that what I said? And tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed what? Throughout what? The whole city, what great thing Jesus has done for him. In some other version, he said he went to the Decapolis, which means the ten cities. The man is not a one city man. The man is not only for the family. He is not a small, a small evangelist. His international evangelist that the devil have taken captive. Some of the people we see and think that they are demons, devil children. They are great men of God who need to be delivered. Your children that have gone wayward, some of them, their capacity is great. And because of that capacity, that is why the devil have taken hold of them. They must be delivered. They must be set free. The reason why your business is struggling and fighting is because you have a great capacity. The reason why I say the hell has been released upon only you is because of your capacity. The reason why when you try everything, it seems not to work is because of your capacity. Today, as we pray briefly, God will take control. Whatever God has for you, ask him that God use me to fulfill my mission on FEF. My mission is not to be cutting myself with stones. My mission and my place is not with the dead bodies. My place is with the living as to bring life to other people. Are you ready now? Yeah. Just briefly, let's stand and pray shortly. Ready? Speak to your God. Speak to him. Everyone has some ability in the person, has some talent in him that God won't use. First, your home. He went beyond his own home to entire city. He wasn't, his ability is not even a family ability. It is a national ability. His ability is not only 
uh, a district ability, but a regional ability. His ability is not only Ghana ability, but the world ability. There are certain things you can supply to the entire world. And because of that, the devil has been attacking you, the devil has been tormenting you, the devil has placed you under a certain condition. Today, in the name of Jesus, I decree and set you free. In the name of Jesus, I shall come and get an encounter with Jesus Christ. I pray for a release in Jesus' name. May you be filled to fulfill your mandate on earth here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that no matter what you are, may your encounter turn to be great. May the Lord meet you at the point of your need. May your boat be filled. May your frustration be turned to a testimony. In the name of Jesus, you have struggled and prayed on that disease, on that sickness, and nothing is happening. Today, may you have an encounter with him. It is that encounter that will change situation. Your business has struggled for many years. You move up and you fall, you move up and everything goes and crash. Today, this morning, may there be an encounter. May there be an encounter. You who is, the, who is destined for death, like Jacob, and now facing that death on your path, your encounter will change your situation, will change your name. And those that seek to destroy you will come and meet a different man, not the Jacob, but the Israel, the one who God has blessed. Yes. And they will seem to like even to bless you. Your enemies will bless you. Because God has had an encounter with you. Throughout your life, I pray that you will have an encounter with God. In your walk, in your dream, at your workplace, in cars, in buses, in your business, in every endeavor that you take. May you encounter Christ. I shall move out with the message of the gospel. May you carry Jesus there. And may the people you preach to have an encounter with him. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Bless you. Now, finally, if you are sick, you have a chronic disease that I've been with you for many years, you've struggled. Like Peter, I'll also pray for you. Because today, I believe that Jesus must walk to your place. Amen. If you're like a man who was possessed and couldn't help himself, today, help is coming. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that wherever Jesus is, the work of darkness will submit to it. The storms of life, the waves of the seas will have to be calm. I decree that every disease and every sickness, those sitting here and those watching me, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, sickness, take your hand up from these people. Amen. Demonic forces that are behind these diseases, today I cast you out by the word of Jesus Christ. Come out! Come out! Come out! Lord, let every flesh be subject to you. Let every disease move out of their body. Today, enter into their boat. And today, 
We are not negotiating with any demon to stay in. But any demonic activities in our home, in our life, in our health, in our finances, in our businesses, today and our job, our workplace, and in our country, we command them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come out! We apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon the post of everyone, upon the forehead. I command divine and total healing. Lord, the numbness in that person, the left side, may it be healed. Amen. Now, the one that have that numbness on the left side, today I say, be released, Amen. be released, Amen. be released, Amen. now, now, now. Thank you, Father, for the healing. Thank you for the miracle. It is done. Amen. You may be seated. Who was the one that had a num Where is it? On one side of the body. This is because no for so long. In the night when I sleep, my hands would die. I can't feel I have to wake up and be shouting, shaking, and my leg would die all of the time. Don't worry. To my, I have to be shaking. You don't need to talk much. Shaking. Be shaking. It is gone. Amen. It is gone. Amen. By a week today, come and give your testimony. Amen. And you that is watching me, struggling with that situation, Thinking there is no solution for that. Jesus is coming. Amen. He's coming. Amen. He's coming to you there. Amen. He's coming to you there. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Satan, take your hand off. Amen. Within a month, you will know that whether God moved or not. It looks very simple. My faith is high. What I believe now, it will be done. Join your faith with me. Whatever you've been struggling with, Jesus. Is coming on your way. Amen. If Jesus took a boat and left all that, those, a lot of people and traveled to one person today, he will take and walk and come to you. Amen. He's interested in the individual and not any other person. You, Amen. you, Amen. he will walk and come to your place Amen. and help you. Amen. He will help you. Amen. He will bring you out of the situation. Amen. Look, that Jesus is still alive. Amen. We're trying to hide that Jesus. We're trying to lower his power. And we try to explain our inadequacy to his power. Jesus Christ, he's the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he shall remain the same forever. Hold fast to him. Believe him. Trust him. It will be well with you. God bless you.
I, I, I feel like organizing a miracle service one of these Sundays. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe in miracles. Well, I believe in a miraculous God. I believe that people come here with situations and conditions that is beyond the human strength. Lord, whoever enters this room with any situation that is beyond human, touch that person. Amen. Even if he's never been prayed for, Lord, the moment he enters here, you know the heart and the need of men. Not only this Sunday, any day we enter here, Lord, let it be a place where people will have an encounter with you in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going. Now we're going to take the offering. Hallelujah. If you have an encounter with Christ, what we try to protect is no longer something we have to protect. Peter always was working and his partners to make have a catch. But after the catch, with the encounter, they forsook what they have been to toiling all their days for. They saw that money is nothing. Christ is the one that matters. When you see Jesus as your center, money is no longer the one that rules your life. Here we don't force anybody. And never let any pastor to manipulate you to give. You are dealing with God and not even with the pastor or the church. So Lord, in their heart, place what they should give. As they give, like how Peter gave his boat, never allow them to go empty. Their toiling will bring so much that they will need partnership to handle what you bless them with. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. After hearing this, like the man who was delivered, he didn't stay at one place. He went to his home and to the Decapolis to tell people what Christ has done for them, for him. So you have also, we also have to continue with the rich. The rich is just getting to your home, your environment, and just telling people what Christ has done for you. So I want to encourage everyone to continue sharing Jesus with someone. And that was exactly what the man did. Don't stay at the tomb. Come out of the tomb and go home and preach other people. Then the life walk, there is also a life walk, I know it has been mentioned, on the 25th March at Christ Temple East. Uh, the tags that you're selling here, that is a tag, is 10 CDs each. Uh, as you buy, you are helping the mental health. Uh, it's a contribution to the mental health. I want, even if you are not going to walk, you can buy uh, as a contribution. It's 10 cities each. Then we, uh, you need to help oh, mental health. There are a lot. You know, Jesus healed some. Hallelujah. He healed that man. But there are some light. The light one, you don't see it well. All of us, sometimes we switch to it small, small. So, <laughs> hallelujah. So, you don't know tomorrow whether you'll be there or I will be there. So, please, let's make the place, uh, contribute to the place. Sometimes when you go to the place, the place itself looks like demons infected because of the environment. Let us pump in so much and make it neatly and nicely and welcome it. Amen. Then uh, the spiritual emphasis. How many of you know we have spiritual emphasis on the 7th, 4th to 7th April? It will be great. The power of Christ will be at work. And I will be ministering with Reverend Ampia Kofi. Amen. Then we are going to share the grace. And after that, there was a wedding, uh, a married last week at Good Shepherd Presbyterian Church, North Legon. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Olin's Lindsay. Uh, we honor marriages and we respect marriages. So after closing, we want to stand for them let them march out first before we go out. God bless you. Look at somebody and ask the person, what did you hear today? <laughs> Amen. Good? Uh, shall we then share the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore Amen, Amen. shall we stand while Oh yeah.